today on an all-new Dr. Phil. With crack your life, I live to smoke. Ted Williams now faces his ex-wife. You've forgiven him. He left you for another woman. Yes. What did you tell the kids when Daddy just disappeared? And reunites with the kids he abandoned. What was it like to grow up with a dad on drugs? It was painful not knowing where he was. Was he still alive? Made me go down the wrong path for a moment. Y'all know his current girlfriend? Mm-hmm. Do you think she's a good influence? No. Does she tempt you to do drugs? Do not blow this opportunity because some toxic relationship has a grip on you. Who ordered the Grey Goose vodka last night? You two? And he was there? But then... I'm gonna make sure that y'all gonna get paid. What starts as a tearful reunion... I don't care how much money you give me. I just want you. I tried to hide the hurt and the pain that I had inside for you. I miss you. Turns to this... I just would like to put my hands around his neck and strangle the life out of him. After an altercation with his daughter, Janae, police were called. He just hit me in my jaw, pulling me by my hair. So I picked up the ice bucket and threw it across the room at him. America needs to know the truth. He's not ready to change. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. If it matters to you, that's what I want to talk about. Are you ready in the booth? Let's do it. The interview you're going to see in today's show with Ted Williams and his family was taped just a few days ago. As you know, the homeless man with the golden voice, Ted Williams, has been on a whirlwind from New York to Hollywood since being discovered on the side of a Columbus, Ohio road last week. And like any addict, old habits die hard. Habits like drinking, drugging, and lying. Now, we've been working closely with Entertainment Tonight on this story, and they reported that police were called to Ted's Hollywood hotel room after an altercation with his daughter, Janae, and both were briefly detained. Now, no charges were filed, but we spoke to daughter Janae right after she and her father were released. He just swung and hit me in my jaw, and everybody jumped in. He's pulling me by my hair. Oh, well, yes, I don't ever want to see him again in my life, Janae, ever. It's okay. And for him to be trying to press charges on me and stuff, no. I am pissed. I am pissed. I'm disappointed. I am, I oh, just want to. Now, Janae is an important player in this story because as you're going to see today, her relationship with her father has been fractured from the weight of his addiction. You don't want to miss the poignant moment coming up in today's show when Janae tells her father what she really thinks. Now, I've spent a lot of time with Ted Williams over the last few days. Yesterday, I sat and talked with him just one-on-one. -on -one. Take a look. From homeless to the streets of Hollywood, it's a twist of fate for Ted Williams that has made him an overnight sensation. The first time I saw Ted Williams, he was holding in his hands a small cardboard sign that said, I have the God-given gift of a great radio voice. When you're listening to nothing but the best of oldies, you're listening to Magic 98.9. And so I whipped out my flip cam and I posted it on a Monday morning. And by Tuesday, it went viral. The homeless man with a golden voice has gone from uh, panhandling on the freeway to fielding job offers from around the country. What will he do with his second chance? Is he ready for a new life? I have some serious questions because I want to help the man with the golden voice. Dr. Phil. How you doing, Dr. my friend? Phil. How are you, sir? I'm well. How about Good yourself? Time. I don't know what to think, Dr. <laughs> I'm crazy. This is crazy. Are you an addict? Yes. And uh, alcohol? Alcoholic, yes, sir. Have you had a temptation to take a drink? Yeah. Did you take the drink? No. So you're not going to be a third chance? No. You blow this. I blow this, I die. You're not on drugs, you're not on alcohol. No, I'm You could not. pass a drug test right now. Yes. If I gave you something said, go pee in this bottle, you'd pass it. Yes. Do you acknowledge that you didn't step up as a father and a husband? There are women in America right now that said, he's got a good job, <laughs> he's got a wife that's partially blind, he's loaded her up with multiple children, he leaves with another woman, doesn't pay a dime, and now we're standing up applauding for him? Fraud, theft, forgery was the quickest way to get my drug. 
seen, I guess, 12 mug shots, because you've been arrested a lot. It's me, Dr. Phil. But you're different as you sit here now. I want to be. You know the challenge now is going to be to set new standards and live in a different way. Yes, sir. And I'm committed to helping you do it. Have you had even a stumble in two and a half years? With alcohol, I did. And I can say honestly, Dr. Phil, it didn't lead me to my drug of choice, which was crack. How recently was that? Maybe a year ago. I'm going to be straight up. I'm sure you got a sense from watching yesterday that I'm clearly approaching the story with a healthy degree of skepticism. That's because I deal with addicts, and I know how they do. And look, I don't want to be the one that rains on anybody's second chance parade. You want the underdog to do well. But you've watched me deal with addicts for years, and it is a difficult disease. It's resistant to treatment. It's subject to relapse. Now, you were probably bothered, as was I, by some of the things in my interview with Ted that just didn't add up. For example, he didn't have a clear answer about why he turned the corner and finally got sober. He also said that he had been sober for two and a half years, but then he admitted during the interview that, well, it's really only been a year. He also denied what happened at a tire store in Columbus when he was accused of belligerent behavior, cussing, urinating in public, and stealing from customers' cars. He just kept denying it when I was saying, look, this doesn't sound like the behavior of a clean and sober man of God. And when I confronted him with a police report, he finally said, well, well, yeah, I remember some of that. I also thought he took way too much pride in how he used his golden voice to steal from stores and was a real celebrity with the police and the prison guard. It sounded a lot like con man to me. I'm sure you were concerned when you heard these things, just as I was. Again, you don't want to be the guy that reigns on somebody's second chance parade, but you've got to deal with the truth. I got him to commit to doing 90 meetings in 90 days. We'll see if he does that. He's an addict. He needs help, and I'm going to confront him tomorrow when I sit down with him yet again. I'm going to do everything I can to get him into rehab. Now, my priority in today's show was to try to start the healing of his relationships with his family. Unfortunately, what you're going to see is that Ted had difficulty owning up to the fact that he was a deadbeat dad. Watch carefully and observe how he interacts with all of his family members. Let's meet your ex-wife. I want to. All right, how long since you've seen her? Maybe three months ago, four months ago. Okay, and you talked to her on the phone occasionally. Yeah, you seen her sure Well, it's so good to meet you. You know this man. Hi, Patty. Let me put you right over here. Okay. What do you think about all of this? It is just, just to be sitting here meeting you, Dr. Uh, yeah. was like, <laughs> oh, wow. Why <laughs> well, it's just overwhelming. You and Oprah are my two favorites. Well, but thank you. Uh, it's just, it's huge. I'm happy for Teddy. I really am. Well, let's talk about him like he isn't even here for a minute. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> I've had some select names for him through the past, but we've always managed to keep respect for each other. How many children did you have together? Two girls, Julie and Janae. Then there were two others that you raised. I had two daughters right. when I first met Ted. So you raised those four children? Yes. And he didn't help much. Well, we're, being, we're being real. Yeah, we're being yeah, real. He, he didn't help much. <laughs> no. You said he didn't handle fame well, got caught up with women, booze, and drugs. And what I've said to Ted is I think it's wonderful that he's gotten this second chance, but I've told him one of the things he's got to do is to do it different this time around. He Absolutely. gets another lap around the track. Absolutely. And he has children, and those children have children. And if he is blessed financially and he has the opportunity to step up and help those that are less fortunate, that he needs to do that this time. Absolutely. And Absolutely. I will. I will. I know, I know you will. But I also know the last time he kind of had the world by the tail, he didn't manage it very well, so I'm wanting him to manage it better this time. Exactly. I believe in second chances. This is the chance that God has given him to redeem himself, to build a relationship with your children who are now grown. But you have grandchildren, grandchildren, all of them. You have a, a visual impairment? I can see you, but, you know, it's kind of blurred. I have blurred vision. I, I, I can't drive anymore. My license were taken when I lost my vision. But uh, 
I've managed. Uh, you're you're a very humble woman, but you, you have to know if you don't that there are a lot of people in America right now that are saying that you're the hero in this story. Yes, I heard. <laughs> How difficult was all of this when he was into drugs and alcohol and you were having to raise these kids without any help or assistance financially or otherwise? What did you do for food? What did you do for... I mean, for well, there were food stamps, you know. There was public assistance uh, that I got for the children. How did you feel that you're on food stamps and public assistance and he has a paying job and isn't helping? Well, for a lot of the time, he wasn't working. During the time that he was uh, on radio is when, you know, there was a lot of groupies and there was a you know, the bright lights and entertainment and everything was there, and he was easily distracted, I believe, through that and and um, went to, you know, ended to another relationship, which... He left you for another woman? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. What did you tell the kids when Daddy just disappeared? What did you say? Well, first, I had to get <laughs> wrap myself around it because I... Um, it hurt me, so I just tried to be strong for them and just try to make it work. You know, it affected, I believe, Janae, which was uh, the youngest at the time, that it affected her more than anything. Uh, she was only three. You've forgiven him? Oh, yes, a long time ago I've forgiven him. There was a period that... Uh, I wasn't a happy camper with Ted, and I did have some animosity, and I was dealing with some anger issues simply because of the struggle in raising the kids. But, you know, I overcame that. I overcame that. Well, I'm glad. I, I did some rough math. And if he had been where he was going to provide two or $300 a month for nine children, you know, each in child support across uh, 15 years, that would have added up to about four hundred eighty-six thousand dollars. Wow! Over fifteen years, and I'm not saying that's the exact number yes, or what yeah. it would be, but but that sounds. Is that how much I owe? <laughs> We're talking about hundreds of thousands yes. of dollars in yeah. in child support that that could have come your way. It would have made a big difference. Yes, absolutely. And and he may have an opportunity to to do some of those kind of financial helping hands for the grandkids and, and others now, and, and you want to see that. Yes. I would like to see you at this time, the position that you are in now, to be able to open the doors, the opportunity for your children. And because right I mean. now they're struggling. I would like to see that happen, and I would like to see you just surround yourself with positive people, Ted. Here's what we're going to do. I want you to step out for a minute okay, and bring the kids in. When we get them all settled and assembled, then I want you to come in. When we return. Today, what do you want to say? It hurt a lot not having you there with me. I miss you throughout my life. And I'm 29 now. And I got three kids of my own. I just want you to just be there for them. I most importantly want my grandkids to be proud of me, to say my papa made it. We now return to Dr. Phil. I'm Ted Williams. Hello, Hi. Dr. Phil. How are y'all? I'm, I'm Phil McGraw. Tell me your name. Trisha. Trisha? Dr. Phil. I'm Julia. Julia? Yes. I'm Desmond. Desmond, how yes, are you? Good to meet you. Likewise. Janae. Janae, how are you? I'm Tyrell. Tyrell, 